Here we go, iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max. We're diving into the camera settings today. If you haven't seen my video from last year on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max camera settings, I'll link that down below. But today we're just gonna tackle the top five camera settings you need to change in order to get the most out of the camera on your iPhone. Let's go. Popping open my settings app here, I'm gonna go into this pod with like TV, photos, camera, books, game center. Don't know why the camera's down there, but it is. We'll open up the camera app and dive right into formats. This is, I think, the most important thing that you should have or you should be looking at when it comes to your camera. There's a few things that have changed here. First one is photo mode. Uh, this is really important because only on the main sensor at 1X can you get this 24 megapixel high resolution uh, shot, I guess. If you tap in on that, you can change it back to 12 megapixels. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I would I would have liked to see this on the 1.2 and 1.5X lenses, the 28 and the 35, which I'll get more into here. I just don't know why they couldn't sample the whole sensor and give everyone a higher resolution image. It doesn't have to be 24 megapixels, right? But um, that just seems like a miss on my uh, on my end. I just, I feel like that's a miss. They'll, they'll hopefully fix that in an update later. And the other thing that you should have on turned on here is this Pro Raw Resolution Control Pro Raw Max. This is just getting you the most information possible out of an image if you are looking to edit it after taking a photo, this is a tool that you wanna have checked so you can actually get into this. The second thing that I wanna show you guys is actually this preserve settings option. I think this is really important. I went through some of the preserve settings that I turn on in that previous video that I did. I do just wanna note here that you can now turn on preserve settings for action mode. This can be very helpful if you're out shooting sports, if you're out in a moving environment, shooting moving subjects, and you're gonna be closing your phone, opening it back up, and you don't wanna to have to deliberately turn on action mode every single time. You can hit this toggle here, turn on action mode, that'll preserve that setting so you don't have to automatically, or you don't have to manually turn that on every single time. I'm gonna turn it off because right now I'm not, I'm not shooting a lot of action stuff. Next up, I'm gonna scroll down here to photographic styles. Last year I showed off that I was using the rich contrast style. I think about halfway through the year I switched back to standard, mostly because of that rich contrast. I feel like it overdid it sometimes or it just underperformed other times. It wasn't really consistent, or at least it wasn't the way that I wanted my images to look all the time. Sometimes it produced a great image that like I didn't need to do any editing or very minimal editing with, but I realized I'd rather just have standard because most of the images that I post, I'm editing. Unless I say I'm not editing them, I'm doing a little bit of something on every single image that I put out, so I use the standard photographic style. You should look into this though, if there is a style that saves you time, if you typically prefer like the warmer settings, cooler settings, contrast settings, it is something to look into, especially if you wanna save time in editing. Okay, the big one here, this is a really big one, is this new main camera option on the iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max. Being able to change this or turn on having the option to have a 28 millimeter and 35 millimeter. I do like that they allow you to turn this on and off, so if you just wanna have the 24 millimeter, that 1X option, you can. Um, I may actually turn off the 28 millimeter option because I don't feel like I use the in-between between the 35 and the 24. Um, and I do have my default set to 35 millimeters. I found personally using the iPhone 14 Pro that I would typically tap into that 2X and then stand back to get the framing and composition for the shot that I wanted. Uh, I realized that was just me wanting a 35 millimeter shot. My favorite, my most shot at focal length is 35 millimeters. So having that on my phone, even if it is just a crop or whatever Apple's doing in the background, um, it's just nice to be able to know I can anchor things from that vantage point and then either zoom out to 24 or zoom into that 2X 50-ish millimeter look um, or go out to the 3X or if you're on the Pro Max, go all the way out to that 120 millimeter lens. But yeah, anchoring it at 35, this was a big win for me. I'm a huge fan of this. If you haven't tried this at least, try playing with this. You may find that, hey, that 28 look, which was on previous iPhones prior to the 14 Pros, that may be more your style. That may be more what you think of when you look and expect to pull out your camera and, and frame up a shot. Maybe it is 35 if you're a professional photographer, especially, and you've been doing photography on mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, things like that, film cameras you may like that 35 millimeter look more that may be more what's in your mind when you're going to take a photo. So be, be aware of that and play with this. This is something that I'm still playing with. I'm working on my review that will be coming out in a few weeks. So make sure you're subscribed so you'll see that. But once I get this dialed in, I think it's gonna be a really powerful tool to just take a photo and not have to think about it, not let the tool get in the way, you know? Finally, right beneath the main camera option is portraits in photo mode. Now this will allow you to automatically capture depth information if your prominent subject in the image 
is a person or a pet. Um, I don't know how well this works. I'm still trying it out. Um, I'm gonna start messing with it more this week, but it is good to know that you can turn this on or off if it becomes distracting. So far, I've been taking many photos with this camera and I haven't had anything weird pop up uh, by having this turned on, but in case there is an issue with uh, not shooting fast enough or getting too much detail or not focusing correctly, it's good to know that I can come in here, turn this off. Um, and it's good to know that this is also a function that I can be looking out for, that I can be looking out for that depth info. And if I get that information on the camera, just be able to tweak that a little bit, you know, add a little bit more depth. Or if I want something more in focus, pull that focal plane forward. I think a lot of photographers actually don't pay attention to how in focus their subject is. You see a lot of like hands and things that come just out of the focal plane, or maybe it's like clothing or something. You want that entire subject to be in focus if that's a part of your storytelling. So sometimes this may even be more powerful to dial back some of the focus rather than just adding blur to your background or adding so much blur that you end up losing the contextual information. That's a big word. Just losing the context of your image. You don't want that. You want your image to tell a story, right? Okay, so that is it. Five new settings here for the iPhone 15 Pro, iPhone 15 Pro Max. Leave a comment down below if there's a setting in particular that you would like me to go over or talk more about, or if you have any questions about the iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max camera. I will be doing a full video talking about what I think about this camera. I would love to answer all of your questions. With that, I just wanna thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I am so stoked, so grateful for all of you. Be kind both in life and in the comments below and like this video to send good vibes across the internet. We will do it again soon. We are just doing a ton of iPhone content video. We'll be doing some more Android stuff later this year. Photography all the way. Later.